Now we get to talk about graphs of polynomial functions. Graphing calculators are good for graphing polynomial functions, but they won't show us important parts of the graph. Like, for example, if our x-intercepts aren't integers, then it's going to be difficult to know exactly where the graph crosses the x-axis. So we're going to learn how to do this by hand and we can check it using our calculator. The first thing we're going to look for is symmetry. Symmetry will help us because if there is symmetry in a graph, then we could just graph half of it and copy it on the other side because it's symmetrical. We're going to talk about the behavior at each of the x-intercepts. And then we're going to talk about how the leading coefficient affects the graph. So we've already talked about symmetry a little bit in the past, and we're going to review it a little bit here. If you want to know if it's symmetric about the y-axis, actually to test symmetry in any way, you just pl plug a negative x into your function. If you get the original function back again after plugging in a negative x, then you know that it's an even function and it's symmetric about the y-axis. If you substitute in your negative x and you get the opposite of the original function, then you know that you have an odd function and it's symmetric about the origin. I remember this because it's opposite, odd, origin, all those O's. Okay, and then the other type of symmetry we've already talked about is symmetric about the axis of symmetry, and this is only true for quadratic functions and it's symmetric about this line, x equals negative b over 2a. Okay, so let's have a look at some problems. Find the symmetry of each graph, if there is any. So, we need to find out if f of x is symmetrical. To do that, we substitute a negative x into the function. Well, when you cube a negative, you get a negative. And a negative times a positive is a negative. Then we have a negative of a negative, which is a positive. So you compare this to the original function. Is it exactly the same as the original function? It's not. But is it exactly opposite? This was positive, now it's negative. This was negative, and now it's positive. So it is exactly opposite. Since it is exactly opposite the original function, we know that it's an odd function, and it is symmetrical about the origin. So what exactly does this graph look like anyway? Here's your graph. If you notice, it's symmetric about the origin. So if you were to take this graph, let me see if I can do this. If you were to take this graph and spin it like that, then it looks just like the original function, right? Well, if I could get it to line up straight <laughs> anyway. There we go. This looks just like the original function. So if you can spin your graph like that and it looks like the original function, that's what it means to be symmetric about the origin. So how about number two? To determine symmetry, we need to substitute in a negative x. Well, when you raise a negative to an even power, you get a positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. Same thing happens here. You raise a negative to an even power, you get a positive, and a positive times this negative is a negative. Compare this to the original. Is it exactly the same? It is exactly the same. Since it is exactly the same, that means it's an even function, so it is symmetric about the y-axis. Okay, 
So what does this one look like? If you were to graph this, it actually looks like this graph. And you can see that it is symmetric about the y-axis because if you were to take this graph and fold it over the y-axis, it's exactly the same on both sides. So how about number three? If you notice right away, it's a quadratic because the highest exponent is a 2. If you notice right away that it is quadratic, then you know that it's symmetric about the line x equals negative b over 2a. So you just figure that out and that's where the symmetry is. So you're going to have a negative of a negative 3, so negative b over 2 times 1. Negative of a negative is a positive, and 2 times 1 is 2. So this is symmetric about the line x equals 3 halves. This graph looks like this one, and you can see 3 halves is 1 and a half. So that would be this line right through the middle of this parabola. This is the equation x equals 3 halves, or 1 and a half. So what about the behavior at the intercepts? Now keep in mind we're talking about the x-intercepts when we say this. The only thing that will happen at the y-intercept is that it will cross. Okay, so that's all you have to know about the y-intercept. So when we're talking about the behavior at the intercepts, we're talking about what does the graph do when it gets to the x-axis. This is what you need to remember. The graph crosses the x-axis if the factor is odd, an odd power. The graph touches the x-axis if the factor is raised to an even power. So this is what that means. Find your x-intercepts. That means set each of those equal to 0 and solve. So if you solve this one, you get x equals 2. And if you solve this one, you get x equals negative 1. Remember, these are called the zeros of the function. So what are the x-intercepts that correspond to those zeros? That would be 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. These are called the x-intercepts. Alright, this says the graph crosses the x-axis at an x-intercept if the factor corresponding to that x-intercept is raised to an odd power. Have a look at this negative 1, 0. This is your x-intercept. The factor that corresponds to it is x plus 1. x plus 1 was raised to the first power, which is odd. That means at negative 1, 0, the graph will simply cross the x-axis. So what about the 2, 0? This says the graph touches but does not cross if the factor is raised to an even power. This is your x-intercept. x minus 2 is the factor that corresponds to that x-intercept. And this x minus 2 is raised to an even power. That means at this point the graph will simply touch the x-axis. But it will not cross at that point. So what does it look like? What are we really talking about? Here's our graph. If you'll notice, 2, 0 is here. At 2, 0, do you notice how the graph comes down, it touches, and it goes back up? That's what this means. At negative 1, 0, that's here, it actually goes across the x-axis at that point. And that's what this one means. So let's do that for these two problems. We need to first find the x-intercepts that correspond to the factors. 
So x plus 1 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, we get x equals negative 1. Add 3 to both sides and we get x equals 3. The x-intercepts are negative 1, 0 and 3, 0. So what does the graph do at negative 1, 0? The factor that corresponds to that is x plus 1 and it's raised to an even power. That means at negative 1, 0, it will simply touch the x-axis, but not cross. At 3, 0, the factor that corresponds to that one is x minus 3, and it is raised to an odd power, which means the graph will cross the x-axis at 3, 0. So what if we have one like number 2? We don't have the factors, which means we're going to have to factor that one. So the very first thing that we can do is factor out an x, because they do all have an x in common. Now we need to factor this again. It is a quadratic. So we need to find factors of negative 3 that add up to a positive 2. So that would be positive 3 and negative 1. Now we have it completely factored. We need to find the zeros. So set each one equal to 0. And solve. x equals 0 will give us the x-intercept 0, 0 x plus 3 equals 0. If you subtract 3, you get x equals negative 3. That's the point negative 3, 0. And then we have x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals 1. That will give us the point 1, 0. So what is the behavior of the graph at each of these points? They all have an exponent of 1, which means they all have an odd degree. So at every one of these points, it will simply cross the x-axis.